starting at verse 15. Proverbs 12, 15. All right? Yes. Okay. Any questions before I get started about anything we have previously talked about? Any questions? All right. Well, let me, let me just drop this on you. Someone asked me a question, they're not here tonight, but I think I'll go ahead and answer it anyway, because there might be someone here that has the same question that they had. And the question was related to, you know, when we were talking about, you know, how a wise person tries to understand where the other person is at before they condemn them. And I use a reference of a, a hurt dog, if you all remember that, mm -hmm. that, you know, the dog is hurt, you mess with him, the dog bites you, not because he necessarily hates you, but because the dog is hurt. And I say that some people are that way. You know, that there are people that hurt you, not necessarily because they are evil, but because they are hurt, and so that their defense is always up. So they're always looking for, for the, you know, for something, and they throw it out before you can throw it out at them. Well, the question that was raised to me was, well, what if the, the um, dog um, is not hurt, it's just a vicious dog? At one point, then you take him to the, you know, to the dog pound and say, go ahead and put him to sleep, put him out of misery, right? So the point was, at what point do you, you know, uh, go ahead and, I guess, knock the person out? <laughs> <laughs> well, the answer is really simple, and, and that is, there's, no, there's nothing in the Bible that says I have to keep getting hurt by you. Just because I understand you don't mean I let you hurt me. Right, and that's the misconception that some people have. So they think and when I talk about forgiving or when I talk about try to understand the other person, that I mean let them keep doing the same thing. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying you want to understand them so you can get beyond them. Because if you don't understand why they're doing things, you will keep, keep it with you all along, right? And at some point, you have to accept some simple things about people. <coughs> Right? And that is, for example, just like with my brother, for example, the story I gave you, you know, some of you earlier, right? Now, <clears throat> the question is, should I be mad at him for almost causing me to be locked up? Well, some people, yeah, I'd be mad at him if I was almost getting locked up, da, 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 da. I understood why he did it. Simple. He didn't want to get locked up. <laughs> right? Now, he, had, he didn't have any idea that my license were suspended, too. <laughs> he just assumed that since I was still driving, my license were not suspended. But I knew they were. You know, and that's why I went and got North Carolina license, right? Because they were suspended. And so his, his intention was not to harm me, but he harmed me, right? I had to take a day off work, right? I had to go down there, I had to go through all the worrying, and they pulled me over. I got an open warrant out for my arrest. I had the bail bondsman looking for me because he's jumped bail, right? But. Me staying mad at him wouldn't have helped the matter out it. So once once you understand why a person does it, it changes things. So now I understand I understood why he did it, so I didn't hold it, I didn't hold it against him. I didn't get mad and say I ain't gonna talk to you no more. I didn't get mad at it, you know. But you know what I knew what to do? Huh? Get yourself straight There you go. That's what I knew to do. Go on down there and get you some insurance that you're supposed to have insurance. So you can get your license back <laughs> so it can't happen again. Right. Right. That's all. I'm just saying, that's, that's, so that's what I did, okay? All right, so my point is this, is that it, you don't have to keep taking a wrong to not punish people who wronged you. You know. Say that again, Pat. You don't have to, <laughs> right? It's right. You don't have to keep taking the wrong, right? But that don't mean you keep trying to wrong the person that wronged you, right? All you do is what? You try to understand why they did it. And once you understand why they did it, you accept that, you know what? What they did might not make sense to you, but it made sense to them. That's it. It made sense to them. And it ain't personal. Let me tell you something people don't understand. It's not personal when people hurt you. You just make it personal. That's right. Because you say it hurt me. Mm -hmm. As if, you know, their sole intent, and, and we got some of that in here in chapter 16. So in 16, we talk about a little more. But rarely is a person so intent to hurt you. You might not know it, but they're trying to get back at you because they think you hurt them. <laughs> and in your mind, you don't see why, but that's what they're doing. 
Okay. All right. I know you don't think so, but anyway, you'll see it later on. If you're smart, you see it now. <laughs> right? That's what the Bible says, right? The wise man. So if you're smart, you already picked it up. Right? There you go. See? Okay. 12:15. Here we go. The way of the fool is right in his own eyes. My goodness, ain't that something? <laughs> <laughs> but he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. You know, that stuff is so straightforward but so true. I wish it wasn't such a normal thing for fools to do. Okay? It's amazing to me how people who don't know and the evidence is they don't know, but yet they will act like they, 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 you can't tell them nothing. You know, you know what I'm saying? Here's the thing. If you're not, if you're on welfare, but they don't call it welfare no more, do it. What do they call it now? Welfare. Welfare. If you're on TANF, right? If, if you're on TANF, don't try to don't try to tell nobody how to get a job. <laughs> don't do it. If you're not a manager, don't try to tell other people how to manage. If you don't have a husband, shut up. <laughs> Why are you gonna get some answers and advice about how to treat their husband? You ain't got one. If you can't get a man, stop trying to tell somebody else how to get rid of their man. Mm -hmm. Right? If you did not raise your children as a responsible father, don't give anybody else advice about how to be a dad. Just say four stop. Right? Mm. Straightforward stuff, right? Because if you, if, 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 because those are the people who don't know nothing, but always think they know everything. Okay? It's just that simple. If you ain't got a car, don't tell me how to go get one. Don't tell me. You got a sale on down here to green my foot. You get five percent off. Okay? The only thing you can tell me is how to get a TRT ticket. That's the only thing I want to hear from you. Okay, it's just that simple. He said, but what? The fool is right in his own eyes. Everybody else think you're stupid. Only you think you're right. But the but 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 he that hearkens unto counsel is wise. Note what that says. He that hearkens unto counsel is wise. See, that means that even people who know a lot still listen to other people. Right? Yeah. People, you, I don't care how much you know, if you're wise, you always are listening to learn. Mm -hmm. Right? I was talking to someone the other day, yesterday as a matter of fact, and, 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 and I was talking about the perspective that women have. That was talking, talking about, you know, just in conversation. Now, because I had been counseling a woman that had some issues, right? That's what pastors do. We counsel everybody. Women, women. And so the person, so my, I, I said, you know, here's what I do when I'm counseling. I listen to learn because even though I have, you know, been trained as a counselor, you know, my education has trained me as a counselor, I have learned more about women from listening to women than I ever learned in school, which allowed me to counsel better because I'm always learning from women. Not only the techniques of counseling, but what I'm learning is what really works for women, because I can tell you right now, the books don't work for women. <laughs> they don't. Right? Come back like you on the front row, right? <laughs> So, but, but that's the thing. So if, see, the minute you say you know, and you stop learning, I don't care what it is, the minute you say you know, you stop learning, and that's when you become a fool. Because there's a lesson to be learned by everybody. 
Even the fool can teach a wise man something. I learn from fools every day. <laughs> every day. Because I run into more fools than I do wise people. A fool's wrath is presently known, but a prudent man cover his shame. Look here, this is what it simply means. You ever seen folk come and say to yourself, my God, here they come again? <laughs> That's what they're talking about. There's some people that you know that, 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 that um, when they come, you got to kind of get yourself ready to hear them talk. <laughs> you know, you got to kind of, okay, I'm ready for them now. You, you know what I'm saying? And then there's some people when they come, what, that, that when they finish talking to you, you feel this talk. You know, they just, they just, it's comforting just to have a conversation with them. And here's the thing, you can be having a problem, right? And you can be wrong, right? And the fool will make you feel worse. And the wise man will make you feel better even though the wise man told you you were wrong. You ever had it happen to you? Mm -hmm. Of course, right? And, and that's what this is talking about, right? And so what this is really talking to us about is what? How we use our own tongue. Okay, all right. All right? He that speaketh truth showeth forth righteousness. I should have just did it all feeling together. He that speaketh truth showeth forth righteousness, but a false witness deceit. There is that speaketh like the piercing of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is health. Because all, the, all three of those kind of fit in together, right? Saying what? There are people that make you feel better, and there are people that make you feel bad, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Now, who you want to be around? Say what now? Who do, what you say? You say her? Her? Yeah. That, that what you say? Okay, all right. <laughs> She's a very wise woman. See how quiet she is? Wise woman. <laughs> no, I'm just mean is that she's just waiting. She, she said, I'm waiting to hear what does he have to say. I'm not going to comment on what she just said. <laughs> His, 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 here is, here is, here is, here is Solomon's, here, here's, here's what Solomon is laying out for us, right? I'm going I'm to put it to you in a, in a different perspective. How many of you all get hurt by what people say to you? No, raise your hand. Just think about it. Right? Now, think about it for a second. Why, why do you keep messing with them? <laughs> Don't be calling your friends crazy. <laughs> Don't be calling the front row crazy. No. <laughs> I know, right? I mean, it, it, it may seem it may seem crazy, doesn't it? But let me tell you something. You'd be amazed at how many people talk about people in their life that they are constantly around that make them feel bad. And you're right. When you, see, when I say it like that, it does seem like what? That's crazy. Who would do that? <laughs> Think about how many people you know that will come to you and tell you about people in their life and they'll be saying, every time she's around us, it's the same old mess all the time. <laughs> Why are you always around us then? That's my thought. <laughs> yep. Why are they still in your life? Yes. Why is he still in your life? Why is she still in your life? Yeah. If the people are causing you to be crazy, why are you hanging around crazy people? In this whole wide world that we're in, as big as the world is, as big as Virginia Beach is, as big as Chesapeake and Norfolk and Hampton and Newport News. Uh huh. Go ahead, And suffer. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes, sir. What if it's uh, husband and wife? <laughs> That's an excellent question. Yes. Yes. Excellent question. Huh? Excellent question. 
here's, here's, that goes back to what I talked about earlier, right? Because here's the thing. Well, I say earlier, I mean a couple of days ago, okay? And I, I hate to say it this way because I know the women are going to get angry a little bit. But you ask the question, I got to answer it, right? Right. Okay. <laughs> I told the women two weeks ago, I said, you have no idea how much power you have. Remember that conversation? Mm -hmm. I said, you all have no idea how much power you have. In, in many marriages, wives don't understand the power that they have with their tongue. And so because they don't understand that, they don't understand that what they're saying really is damaging. Because oftentimes their thought process is, you a man, you ought to be able to take it, and it shouldn't have any effect on you. But you're right, I'm married. I can't walk away from you now. Why well, I said to you, death do us part. Either way, I choke you to death, or I stand <laughs> you to death. <laughs> One of two things. So then what do I do about that when, when she don't understand? Well, here's, here, here's, here's what Solomon says. That when a person doesn't understand where you are, a part of your job is to help them help them to, to, to come to a place where they can empathize with what you where you are. So sometimes we just have to let them know, let me explain something to you. What you are saying does not make me do it more. What you are saying does not make me better. What you're saying does not get me, you know, incentivized to do something. What I need you to do is to not uh, 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 judge me by your standard, but judge me by, well, by God's standard, by God's standard. Because God's standard is rarely our standard, rarely. Now, I'm not saying that every woman would be wise enough to pick that up, but that's really what we're trying to get to, is where you can say what? Let's go, let's go by God's standards and not by your standards. Because I can tell you, most people don't, right? Like, for example, I said this record. I know Liz was kind of kidding when she said this, but she said, well, well, your wife got to put up with you. And y'all laugh and said, yeah, she's right. Liz's right. How's Liz right? Liz don't know what my wife put up with. You ever been to my house, Liz? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. Not one time have you. Right? But, but see, she was using the standards, right? And that's why all the women said, yeah, that's right. Because the standard you all was using was a standard that, that, that is made by mortals and not by God. See, nobody asked themselves one simple question. Is he doing what God told him to do? Right? right. I know. See, so that way what y'all thought. You know what y'all thought was? He's just like every other man. He's got to put up with it. <laughs> well, I know. Listen, I know you did. But this role and this role. And it's definitely the role behind you. <laughs> Don't even, don't even wave your hand like that, because you know good dog go well. You was over there amening the whole night long. <laughs> won't, won't you? Won't you amen the whole night long? I know she <laughs> But no, I'm just saying. So I mean, that, that's a big part of it. So I mean, so how do you how do you deal with it? For me, it's, it's I should say simple, but it's what we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. Your job there is to try to understand why they keep doing it. Mm -hmm. I gotta understand you. Why? Why is it that everything that comes out of your mouth is a put down? Why? What are you trying to accomplish by continually putting me down? See, only when I understand you can I help you change. And sometimes the reason why you keep putting me down is because in your mind I'm putting you down. Now, I'm just saying sometimes. Because so sometimes people will presume that what you're saying is a negative. And when people get a negative, you know what they do? They attack with a negative. So sometimes it's incumbent upon me to say, oh, let me address what I'm doing, and let me start lifting you up more. Yes, my dear. I'm not going to make a point. I'm, I'm very serious about sure. this. Uh, Pastor Daniel's ex. I know you were just kidding. I just used it as an example. I know that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but what I want to say is how I have learned so much said about the differences about men and women mm -hmm. and because I come out of here or I come out of church on Sundays and I think it, you know and it takes me 24 hours because I'm slow right and no I think you're extremely wise Liz <laughs> see you pick me up as if I'm picking you up I think you're extremely wise <laughs> Well, thank you, um, Liz. 
Now, 18 deals with what he just said, with the question he just rose, right? It says, there, there, is, there is that speaketh like the piercing of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is help. So he's saying what? That, that there are some that will do that, but what we should do is to combat that with speaking something that brings them up, or that's why I said speak it with help, that brings you up. Because usually people that are piercing with their tongue have been pierced with their tongue. And, you, and it may not be you, it could have been, that's how they grew up. They could have grown up in that environment where it was always something like that, you know. And so that's, to them, that's communication. And so it, sometimes it takes, it takes us to, to understand that, because if you don't understand that, you attack them back. They call you stupid, I ain't stupid, you don't want stupid. <laughs> You know, and so now we, that's that's how we deal with each other. And after a while, that's all our conversation is. But if I understand that, then I can change that. You know, I can keep changing it by coming back with a positive. And the more I come back with a positive, after a while, according to Solomon, and I have to agree with the Bible because I can't just sit and tell you the Bible is wrong. That they will change what they do. They will change how to speak. Is it easy? No. I would be the first to tell you it's not easy. It's never easy to keep coming back with something positive when someone keeps giving you something negative. It's not easy. And it's not something that happens overnight. Here's what psychologists tell us. It takes at least 30 days to develop a habit. 30 days. That means I gotta do this for at least 30 days. That's a lot of hours. I know it is. <laughs> I, but see, the question is, is, you know, is there anything, anything worth having is worth working for, yeah. right? So see, here's, here's, the irony of life is this. And uh, you know, and this is you know the question y'all have um, are, are really are in the next chapter, really in the next chapter. But, but we can talk, we can talk about it a little bit now too. Here's the irony of, of life in general. How many hours do you spend working, generally? Eight hours a day, right? You spend eight hours a day working. How many hours do you spend with your spouse? Huh? Well, eight hours. Y'all speak somewhere else? Y'all don't hate the whole thing? That's what he means. That's what he means, yeah. That was a day long, is it? Well, normally, I didn't say awake hours. I said just how many hours. That's what it's about. You didn't see him on the weekends, too, right? <laughs> I mean, you see them, they're off sometime. But, okay, here's my point. Here's what I'm saying to you. Why will we work on getting better at a job, but not work on getting better as a husband and wife? Mm -hmm. Marriage don't just happen. Marriages are not good because they just... Yeah. Just good. No. Marriage is good it. because people are working. working it. You gotta work. You're working to develop habits, mm -hmm. right? You're working to develop habits. And once it becomes habits, that's when things are repetitive to you. Mm -hmm. if, if you kiss your spouse every day before they leave, it becomes a habit. So after a while, you don't even think about it no more. You can be mad with them, and you still go in there and say, well, good, good, I'm gone. I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> But because you kissed them, they understand something. You know what? You mad right now, but you're coming back home. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? But I'm telling you, you have this, and it takes time. But if you work on something long enough, see, most of us have not, all, if you've been married for a long time, you've been dealing with negative for a long time. It ain't just happening overnight. And if, if you've been dealing with them for a long time, that means you got a lot to correct. And on average, this is on average. It's not a. This is not you know cutting stone. But on average, any 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 counselor will tell you any. If you've gone for counseling classes, you understand this perfectly well. For every year you've been married, it takes about a month of counseling to straighten out. That's a general rule. Wow. General rule. For every year it takes a month to straighten it out. If you've been married thirty years, guess what? You got about three years to be working on it. You got about three years. Why? Wow. You got thirty years of this you, of that same thing over and over again. It ain't gonna just happen like that. Mm -hmm. You had to work through a lot of stuff because you built up a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Thirty years is a lot of baggage to, to unpack. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. You might you might get through one year of it, but then it's something that happened twenty years ago. Somebody still ain't unpacked yet. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna get unpacked whether you like it or not. <laughs> at the worst time. Yeah. Why y'all at the family reunion? <laughs> 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 no, 
Yes. So, so what happens if it's coming here straight now, even after you do all this work mm -hmm. to try to get things back? No such thing. There's no way you can truly work on any situation and it not get straight now. If, if, if you are really working on it. I don't mean just going through the motions. If you're really working on it in a biblical way, there's no way it will not get straightened out. There's nothing you cannot overcome if it's in a biblical perspective. I'm telling you, that's gospel truth. Okay? You know how I know? Because I've been married since 1982. And I met her in 1975. And we're still just as much in love today as we were back in 1974. See, brother. See the ladies, see how they were clapping? Because they didn't catch what I said. No, I said it was a year earlier. Some of them ain't heard it say, but they ain't catch it. They ain't care. It was just a romantic statement. No, I, I, I said that for a reason. I said that for a reason. Here's why. Because everybody has in their head who that person is for them. That's what I'm saying. You, you know what I'm saying? You, have, you, you have in your head who that person is for you. And then you meet them, and then it's confirmed, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Ah, oh, you don't get it all right. Yeah. You get it. Huh? No, I meant what I just said about. No, you didn't hear it. Don't worry about it. Let's move on to verse 19. Don't worry about it. Okay. The lips of truth shall the lips of truth shall be established forever, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. You know, that's, again, that's straightforward stuff. Here we go. It's simple. What? If you tell the truth, you're good to go tell a lie. We're gonna find out. Because you can't. You, yes, sir. Wait. If, oh, say it again. Oh, thank you. <laughs> if you tell the truth, you're good to go. If you lie, we're going to find out. Right? Because the lie going to come up. Because yeah. one thing you cannot do is you cannot repeat a lie in a way that I believe you more than once. <laughs> you cannot do it. Because you cannot remember a lie because it didn't happen to you. So the only way you can remember a lie is if it happened to you. See, something that happened to you is in your brain. Because mm -hmm. it happened to you. So it's, in, it's imprinted in your brain. Mm -hmm. So all you do is recall what's already there. A lie is not imprinted in your brain. Mm -hmm. This is not imprinted in your brain. You got to remember what you said was there that's not there. And it never comes across the same way. Right? It's going to change. Even the truth changes, but not like a lie. Let me tell you another way how, how, another way how you know somebody lying. Let me tell you the exact same story the same way. They've been practicing it. Because nobody remembers what happened to them the same way. You always remember, it'll be the same thing, but you remember another detail about it. Because the more you say it, the more details you remember. So if it's the same thing, exact same thing, they practice it, it's a lie. <laughs> All right, some of y'all looking at them before and they're like, what? <laughs> they lied? Yes, they lied. <laughs> Deceit is in the heart of them that imagine evil, but to the counselors of peace is joy. Okay? Deceit is in the heart of them that imagine, deceit is in the heart of of them that imagine evil, but to the counsels of peace is joy. Right? Again, th this is meant, even though Solomon is saying it about a person, I want you to take it from a personal note, okay? Because if you take it from a personal note, even though he's saying that, uh, that, that, that um, people that are, are People that are evil by nature are always trying to pull a fast run on folk and get things in a dishonest way. I want you to look at it from a personal note. Because from a personal note, you know he says that, but to the counsels of peace is joy. So from a personal note then, what if I want to have joy? 
What if I want to have joy? What he's saying is, listen, don't waste your time trying to get back at folk with evil plans. Because if you do, you will not have joy. They will have stole the joy from you. Take your time and try to do something to bring peace to somebody. And that will give you joy. Because the, the, the simple, the simple uh, uh, fact of the matter is this. Let's say someone has done you wrong, right? And they really did do some hurt to you. So your thinking is, no, they can't get away with it this time. They always get away with it. They're not going to get away with it this time, OK? And that's what you purpose in your heart to do. What is your mind on? Evil. evil. Not just evil, but your mind is always reliving the pain they caused you. <clears throat> so the more I think about what I'm going to do back to you, what you did, what I'm doing is I'm reliving the pain you caused me. Now, you caused me the pain a long time ago. That's over with. But I keep reliving the pain, so I keep it fresh. It's fresh. Every day I try to go back and do something about it. But if I rather than me keep reliving that pain by thinking of how I'm going to get back at you, if I try to think of a way to help somebody else out and give them joy, now my mind is not on you. My mind is on helping somebody else and bringing peace to somebody else, which allows me to get some joy out of my life that day. Amen. Rather than keep thinking about you and what you did to me. Because the, the operative word is did, D-I-D. It's over with. And, it ain't, and I don't care what I do to you right now, it's not going to change what you did to me. So I got to get you out of my head. So to get you out of my head, I got to put somebody else in my head. I'd rather put somebody else in my head that's going to give me joy, so I'm going to try to concentrate on somebody else helping them out. Okay? No, no, just two amens on that one? Amen. 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 Uh, 21 and 22 kind of go together. Uh, there shall no evil happen to the just, but the wicked shall be filled with, with mischief. Lying lips are abominations of the Lord, but they that deal truly are his delight. There shall no evil happen to the just, but the wicked shall be filled with mischief. Now, I know that someone's saying right now, wait a minute, Pastor. Are you trying to tell me that if I am just that nothing bad will happen to me? No, that's not what this is saying. What this is saying is this, that God will never <coughs> punish you when you are just. That no, he will not do anything to bring you down when you are just. But, 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 the, but, but, the, but the wicked, he will let stupid stuff happen to them. He will protect you, but he's not going to protect them. And there are some folk that say things like this. Like I was talking to a young lady today, and she said that someone said to her, the Lord's trying to tell you something. Something bad happened in her life. And they told her, the Lord is trying to tell you something. So she says, Pastor, what have I done wrong? I said, listen, you tell the fool that told you that, that they are a fool. <laughs> <laughs> because the Lord don't need to cause you this much stress and strife to tell you something. Okay? He wouldn't put you in a position to tell you something. All right? Now, you know, because that's not, he's just telling us what? He's not going to bring evil in your life. Not when you are just, right. right? So even if if you are going through some stuff, it's either one or two things. If you are wicked, then get unwicked. <laughs> if you are just, it ain't hard. Okay. Now, now that doesn't mean bad things don't happen. But here's the difference: if you think something happened because of of God, it causes you to to put yourself in a place you don't need to be in. Because now you are always thinking bad about you. And it changes how you deal with the situation. See, if I know you are the one doing it to me, I ain't big, I ain't worried about forgiveness or none of that kind of stuff. All I do is what? I ain't messing with you no more. Right. If I think God is doing it, now I'm always worried that something else gonna happen to me. Mm -hmm. That God put this on me. No, if you put it on me, so I'm leaving you alone. No, that's as simple as that. That, that makes sense to y'all? Yes. Okay, all right. Question. Yes. Question. Sure. All right. So, um, what if, like, say, a person gets in some trouble, mm -hmm. and um, he gets locked up, and, um, but yet, God speaks to him in that, in that faith, like, like, like God probably had to sit him down mm -hmm. to get his attention off to, off the, 
things that he was doing that that Bible was wrong. Okay, I think I understand what you're saying. Yeah. I don't necessarily agree with what you said, but I think I understand what you said. Because this is what you said. What if a wicked man gets locked up, right? Well, that assumes that everybody gets locked up is wicked. And I don't assume that. Okay. Right? Because you can get locked up and not be wicked. Right. See, you can, in other words, you can make a mistake and not be wicked. Right? right? Like, I made mistakes, but I wasn't wicked. Right. I feared God. I loved the Lord. <laughs> But I still did things that would have put me in jail. You follow what I'm saying? So that means I wasn't wicked. I just was what? Foolish. Foolish. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, everybody in here is. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what? Foolish things you, you seen? There is not one that, right? No, not one, right? Okay. So that, that see, like for example, everybody in here has done something worthy of jail. Let me give you a class example. Oh, yeah, you too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for, for example, it, for, I mean, this thing, in a, for, for, think about it. In the state of Virginia, in the state of Virginia, right? In the state of Virginia, right? Do you know that in the state of Virginia, cohabitation is illegal? In the state of Virginia, cohabitation is illegal. Look at how many folks cohabitate. In the state of Virginia, did you not know that if you are a man and you have sex with a woman under 16, it is statutory rape. Yeah. Yeah. No matter how old you are. Yeah. Right. So you can be 17, she can be 15, or you can be 15, she can be 15. It's statutory rape and you can go to jail. <laughs> That's the deal. You know, it's, it's, we, we, all, we do a whole lot of things worth, but it don't mean we're wicked. It means what? We made mistakes, right? That's what, that's what I'm saying. So now, but, but, but so if I get locked up, that don't mean that's evil. Again, see, getting locked up is not evil. They'll, they'll, you know, it's not. Getting locked up is just being punished. All punishment is not evil. If I spank my children, that's not evil, but that's still punishment. Mm -hmm. So you don't equate punishment with evil. You equate punishment with correcting. And sometimes correcting is painful. Mm -hmm. Jesus said those I love I chase and rebuke. That's not being evil. That's punishing them because I love them, so I want to correct them. You follow me? So, so sometimes being locked up is what? I'm just correcting them. Yeah, see, I'm trying to give you one year so you don't get 20 years. Right? So I'm correcting you now before something else happens to you. Right? Did that answer your question? If not, tell me now so I can make sure I answer it. Yeah, 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 you kind of answered it. Well, hold on, hold on, I got you, hold on. <coughs> so, so you saying, I, I probably heard it wrong with the saying wicked instead of foolish. All right, what, what I'm trying to, trying to say, I, I had a situation before. Uh -huh. And um, when I was in Maryland, and like when I got locked up, mm -hmm. they, um, they said, um, well, I was doing bad things, getting a robbery and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah no matter what. And, and, and the thing was, like, the victim said it was a white man that robbed him, mm -hmm. and they arrested me for it, and gave me a $300,000 bond. Right, right. But by, by me going in jail, it's like, when I had that sit down, they kind of... Called you to change what you were doing. Change everything, it's like... But, but I, you didn't do the robbery, right? So that means you weren't wicked. Right. That, that, I, I know, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. So what you... <laughs> no, I got you. So the question is what... I, I guess what you're saying well, was... well, So was the, so that what you're saying was maybe God was trying to sit you down and straighten you out? Right. About... I was, I was I was no, I got you. No, I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're saying, but see, that's not evil. My point is that that's not evil. Yeah, evil is evil is when someone does something maliciously, right? So God, if you know, if, if we say God was trying to get your attention, He wasn't doing it maliciously, right? Because armed robbery occurs how many years? Twenty-five. You 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 ain't get twenty-five years. So then that tells you right there what. It wasn't evil. 
Right. It may have been. It may not have been what you wanted, right. but correction can hurt. That's what I was saying. See, correction can hurt because a, a whooping hurts. Right? Why whoop? Why whoop if they're gonna be laughing? Hey, give me another whooping. <laughs> <laughs> Punish you with evil. Why doesn't God punish you with evil? Because by definition, God cannot be evil. See, we we act like it's bad to, on our standard. That means it's evil. No, evil is always equated with those who are against God's premises. But does the devil, like in hell and stuff, go? When God sends you to hell, the devil uses evil to punish you. So isn't that even pretty deep? Um, okay. Okay, y'all hear this question? I, I heard you. I, 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 I got you. I just like what you said. That's all. I like it. I'm smiling because what you said, a lot of people believe, but it's wrong. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're going to explain it, right? Okay? Here's what this question was. If you go to hell and the devil is in hell, and the devil is tormenting you, isn't God using evil? The devil ain't gonna be tormenting you in hell. The devil gonna be tormenting himself in hell. See, here's what the Bible says. I, I know, see, even her, she's looking like, what? I thought the devil was gonna be down there saying, get it hotter, get it hotter. <laughs> <laughs> Satan will be cast into the lake of everlasting fire. No, the rest of y'all too. running the show and managing managing you know the fire. No, right. no. He ain't gonna be managing nothing. He's gonna be being tormented like everybody's gonna be tormented. Okay? Yeah, so no, he gonna be, and then when, you, when I tell them jokes about devil in hell, it's just a joke. <laughs> you know, you know, he's gonna be he's gonna be um, um, uh, punished as well. Him and all those that follow him. That's right. We'll be punished just as just as well. Hmm? Right, yeah, and that's, I mean, you know, I mean, I don't want to go into the whole detail because, I mean, it's kind of, it's, it's, it's not as simple as I'm getting ready to put it, but I'm going to put it in a simple way. Okay, here, here, just so you understand, okay? Here's what happens, right? You have God who's in heaven, right? And Satan is a, the one you call Satan, who formerly we call Lucifer, who was an angel, who was one of the angels. One, one, of, one of the chief angels in heaven, right? What we would call archangels, like Michael and Raphael and Gabriel and all those angels. Well, because of Satan's status, his mindset was, God ain't doing nothing, I'm doing all the work. Okay, just like most of us think about our bosses. They don't do nothing, we do all the work. We smarter than them. Like you think about your mama, right? Smarter than her, right? <laughs> so, so because of that, Satan decided he wanted to be the chief ruler. Mm -hmm. So he convinced one third of the angels to follow him, and they were going to try to take over. Okay. So what God did was he got the other archangels to go against him. Satan lost and was cast out, okay, was cast out. And so because of that animosity, that's why we have that fight that we have now. So anything that, that, that God wants, Satan is still fighting against because he's still fighting for control. And what the Bible just is telling us 
is that in the end, that Satan will not win the war. Mm -hmm. That is a good question for him. Right. That, that, that Satan is like you. Yeah. That, yeah. And, that, and that's why, it, when we, that's why we say anything that Satan is pushing is evil is because it's pushed by him. Mm -hmm. Right? And it, it could, the same result could come from it. Satan could do something and you die. God could do something and you die. But we don't call what God did and you die evil. Because God did it. When Satan does it, we call it evil because of who did it. Everybody get to follow that? Yes, sir. Sure. So with that, um, so like with Job and his situation, mm -hmm. when the devil had to go to God and get permission. Right. So like, is that... Does he get, like, is there any other stories in the Bible that the devil gets permission to mess with this man or that woman? Well, in the 66 books that you read, um, I'm saying the 66 books that you read because you probably already know this, there are more books that, that are considered the Bible than the ones that you read, right? Okay, now, so, but the thing is this, um, and again, this is kind of like above this class level, okay? So that's why I'm giving you superficial answers, right? What you get in the canonized version of the Bible is not always the why, but the what, okay? It's the what, right? So for example, what Job does, it just gives you the why Job was experiencing those things not just why the outcome, but why he went in it in the first place. Most of the Bible doesn't tell you the why, it tells you the planned outcome of it all. Okay, you know what I'm saying? So if some, like for example, when Pharaoh did what Pharaoh did, right? God says, I hearten Pharaoh's heart, right? It doesn't tell you what tool he used to hearten Pharaoh's heart. It doesn't tell you that Satan could have been the tool that he used to hearten Pharaoh's heart. You know what I'm saying? So there are a lot of things in the Bible that you just don't see the why. You just see what happened and the outcome that God was pushing from it. The outcome was what? The children of Israel would leave Egypt and get to the promised land. The outcome of Job is what? That he would come to understand and God would bless him tremendously. And we would get from that story that what? Just because you lose it through the work of evil, doesn't mean that God won't give you more in the end. Because mm -hmm. oftentimes, God allows things to happen to you because if you don't drop something out of your hand, you can't get more back in your hand. Follow me? Okay. That's a different class. For that one? Ah, <laughs> uh, you coming with him? Okay. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> well, actually, the, the, the class I give for these ministers is not in that class. That's, that's an advanced class. That's the class you would take if you like in a doctoral class. So what you just said is in the Bible or in a, the upper class type, doctoral type? What I just Bible, said? The why. The why. Like, where did you get the why from? From which story? The Job story. That's in the Bible. That's in the Bible. This yeah. Bible. Yeah, that's in your Bible, right? Oh, I thought we were talking a whole different. No, it's, <laughs> no, it's in your Bible. That's that's in the first and second chapter. So when we read it for basic for uh, basic value, we just get the what? No, 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 no. Okay, if you if it's different now. If you read your okay, let's back up for a second. Are everybody okay with me backing up for a second? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. When you read the Bible, you look at it in two ways. The first way you always look at it is as a history book. Okay. You always read it first as a history book. So you can say, this is what happened. Right? And then once you read it as a history book, you know what happened, then you go back and look at it and say, does it tell me why it happened? Mm -hmm. And in some cases it tells you why, and in some cases it doesn't. Okay? But if you look at Job, it just so happens it tells you both. Oh, okay. Okay, it gives you history, then it tells it tells you in the first two, the first two chapters, it tells you why. It says Job was a just man. A man that what? Loved God and eschewed evil. 
right? And then it says that God was, you know, doing what God does. And, and, and Satan says, listen, everybody, you know, Job is an example, right? To talk about humankind. He's just, he's just using that one man to point out how humans are. And, and God is telling Job, Satan is doing what people do to us. Just like people try to tempt you, trying to tempt God into letting him back in. That's what he's trying to do. Lord, let me back in. Okay? So he says to him, you think they love you. They don't love you. They only love what you do for them. And if you weren't doing all you were doing for them, they wouldn't love you. And he's saying that what? True love is not about what you give to somebody. But you giving them a lot of stuff. It's only why they love you. Right? Yeah. Why? Right? That's just like, you know, the two of you. Right? You stop giving. <laughs> right? It ain't just you. It's all of us in here. Right? We, we say what? True love. Bottom line is what? You stop giving. If I stop giving, guess what? It's going to be a new husband. Yeah? It is what it is. Right? So, 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 Job, so, so God says to Job, God, no, God says to Satan, have you considered Job? Mm -hmm. This is a man that loves me, not because of what I gave him, but because he understands I am worthy of love. And so Job says, well, I tell you what, take all this stuff away from him, and I bet he won't do it. So God says, well, take it away then. But you can't touch him. So he kills his kids, he takes all of his goods. Right? And Job just makes a proclamation. The Lord give it, and the Lord take it away. But blessed be the name of the Lord. So then Satan talks to God again and says to God, look at That ain't nothing. He can re-get all that stuff. I bet you take his body. God said, you can do what you want to do with his body, but you can't kill him. Okay? So he works some stuff on him. He just boils and all this stuff all over his body, painful sores all over his body. He's wretched. He's rancid. He, he looks like a man that's rotting from the outside in. He's stinking because his flesh is rotting on, on him. And so all, everybody else is avoiding him. They put him, put him away. His wife is so mad at him because all her kids are dead. And she's blaming Job for her kids dying. She was a rich woman. Now she's dirt poor. So she's angry with Job. So she's so mad at Job, she says, I wish you were dead. And that's why she says to him, you curse God and die. Because she can't remarry unless he's dead. So she wants him dead so she can remarry, get some more children, and get some more wealth. And Job says, you foolish woman. And he wouldn't do it. Okay? And that's what he's referring to. Right? But here we are told the why. We know that it was Satan attacking Job because God took back the, uh, allowed him to do. What happened to Job after that? Everything that God took, everything that Satan took away, God took doubled. It he gave it back to him. Same wife. Hmm? Same wife. Well, you know, everything. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all just keep on giving me a, a way to talk about you. Yes, yeah, same wife, same wife. Same wife. Well, because see what? Job understood her. Because he, since he understood her, he, he, did, he didn't get angry with her. Okay? Now, he was angry with God. Because he assumed that everything bad that was happening to him was happening to him because God was punishing him. So he was saying, Lord, I have been righteous. Why is all this happening to me? Because he didn't understand either the what or the why. You knew the what, but not the why. Okay? Um, I, I know we went left on that one. Uh, everybody good? Okay. Okay, let's go to verse 23. A prudent man concealeth knowledge, but the heart of the fools proclaimeth foolishness. Ooh, that's good one right there. Uh, Prudent man concealeth knowledge. That means what? A, fool, a, a prudent man you can tell your secrets to. And he will hold it to himself. He, what, he, what he knows, he will keep. Right? Or she. 
But a fool, you cannot shut them up. Okay? They will not hold anything in. So let me tell you something, just so you understand something. Now, if you want somebody not to know, don't tell a fool. Because they're going to tell everything. And if you told somebody something, and they already told somebody, then that tells you who they are. Don't get mad to tell it again. Because we've already ascertained what? They are fools. So don't get mad. I thought you were my best friend. I told it last time. You thought I was going to change this time? No. All right? What's the best way to keep a secret? Keep it a secret. Keep it a secret. Don't tell nobody but God. That's right. Right? Don't even tell your pastor. That's right. I might be might be sleep talking one night. You might use it in the classroom. No, I ain't gonna use it in here. Without changing your names. No, I don't use it in here. Anytime I tell y'all a story in here, it is embellished. Unless the person is dead. If they did, you know, it's too late. Matter. It don't matter. They, yeah. they, ain't, they don't know nothing nowhere. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the hand of the diligent shall bear rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. That's, that's straightforward stuff right there, right? That means what? If you don't work, somebody's going to always rule you. Yeah. Okay? Heaviness is the heart of, the heaviness in the heart of man, excuse me, Heaviness in the heart of man maketh it stoop, but a good word maketh it glad. Now, that means that's simple what? Bad news will depress you, good news will lift you up. Yep. That's all that means. Bad news will depress you, good news will lift you up, right? So all that means is what? Stop bringing folk a bunch of bad news all the time. <laughs> People get tired of you always bringing them bad news. Bring them stuff that will lift them up. Okay, you want people to like you. Tell them stuff. Let me tell you the biggest mistake we made. We want people to like us so we start gossiping bad news about other people. Because we think if we can tell you something bad about somebody, then you're going to like because I'm gossiping along with you. It does the opposite. It does the opposite. Because people don't like tail bearers as good friends. Now they'll listen to you, they'll get all the gossip, but they don't like tail bearers as friends. If you want somebody to be your friend, always tell them some good stuff and lift them up. Mm -hmm. Always tell them, always have some good stuff to tell them. Always. Okay, I'm trying to finish this chapter out in two minutes. Okay. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor, but the way of the wicked seduceth, seduceth them. Okay? Again, that's kind of straightforward stuff. Right? Straightforward stuff. It's simple. Uh, if you got good sense, you choose good friends. Mm -hmm. That's all that means. If you got good sense, you choose good friends. Okay? But people who are wicked will do dishonest things to get people on their side. Mm -hmm. The slowful man roasteth not that which he took in hunting, but the substance of a diligent man is precious. 27, guess what this? Here's the deal. 27 even though I know hunters don't know this is in the Bible for the most part, 27 is most hunters. Because most hunters hunt for sport. Mm -hmm. And this is saying that if, you, if you're hunting for sport, then you are not where God wants you to be. That's why it says the slowful man roasteth not that which he hunted. You killed it, but you didn't, you didn't eat it. You didn't, you didn't kill it for food. Right. Okay, you didn't do for food, but the substance of the diligent man is, is precious. But to, to the man that is wise, he only takes that which he needs to replenish himself. That's right. In the way of righteous is life, and in the pathway thereof, thereof there is no death. That's just what? That's Salvation 101. Right? Salvation 101. If you do the right thing, you'll never die. But you live forever. Right? Yes. Can a man die? Can a woman die? Huh? No, your soul, your, your body, but your soul cannot die. Right? Your soul can't die. Okay? Everybody know that? Yep, I did. Your soul can't die. You know why your soul can't die? Do you know, do you know scientists have proved that your soul can't die? 
Did you know that? No. Oh yeah, they proved a long time ago. Albert Einstein proved that your soul cannot die. Mm -hmm. Right? Did you know that? Yes. Let me tell you right quick. Yeah, because here's what here's what the theory here's what the theory of relativity says: that energy can neither be created nor destroyed. Right. It can only be changed. You are full of energy. His theory said that you cannot destroy energy. It can only be transformed. Which means that scientists have said, you can't destroy the energy in you. You can only change it. Mm -hmm. So that means when you die, what that which gives you life Don't has to stay alive somewhere. It just goes somewhere else. Yep. Amen. The, the, the debate is where it goes. If you believe in God, you believe it goes to heaven. Mm -hmm. If you're an atheist, you yeah. believe it goes back and recycles on the earth. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, see y'all studied that in school? E, e, e equals MC, M, e equals MC squared, and it never dawned on you. Wait a minute. Albert Einstein proves that there is a God somewhere. Yes. Yeah, you live. Yeah, you had your been. My, my, uh, I have a very good friend who's a uh, nuclear physicist. Mm -hmm. And we were talking last night, and we were talking about God, and he's a believer in God, and he said, we as physicists are now proven. Oh, yeah. But, and and they, have, they have proved it a long time ago. Yeah. They just couldn't figure out where that energy goes. Yeah. Now, but here's the thing. See, now we can measure energy. So since we can measure energy, they know that the energy doesn't stay because they can measure that it is released somewhere. Yep. Right? So they know it's gone somewhere. Okay? All right. All right. Listen, next week, next week we're having a joint, joint Bible study with Good Samaritan, all right? Okay. So it's joint with Good Samaritan. So next week we will not do prayer and praise because that's going to be a part of the joint Bible study. All right? Seven o'clock. Yes. <laughs> and and there will be there will be there will be refreshments as well. There will be fellowship and so we're gonna sit around and we're gonna learn as we eat. Uh we gonna well just just we're gonna assemble down here just till they get everything ready upstairs. Okay? So just don't be late. Okay? Right. Probably at 7 o'clock. All right? All right. God bless you. And the heaven smile upon you. And I'll see you Sunday.